Okay, here we go. <clears throat> I made it. Only four minutes late. I just ate dinner. Um, so I just got home from work about ten minutes ago and ate, and I'm ready to go. But I am... Thankfully, our scope for this evening is pretty, uh, pretty well defined. Let me, um... See if I can turn on some other music here. Just fiddling with my music player. I, I have a hard time with sound levels still. Um, hopefully this isn't... Last time they were a lot quieter than I thought, and hopefully this time they're not too loud. Alrighty. Get in the mood here. And now, hopefully, I'm not going to forget my my streaming duty to explain to the reviewer what what we're about for tonight. Um, we want to put up a. We've we've already kind of done this, so what we're going to do is. You know, they say. Uh, What's the plural for white dudes with beards? It's, it's a podcast. That's what we're going to make here. We're going to make a podcast that's not a plural of white dudes. It's, well, it's it's a stand-in for, I guess, one white dude. have to use the, the right voice. They're making a podcast out of a pollen site. <clears throat> you hit publish, you get a podcast. Okay. Well, oh, what's podcast? Podcast is two things. It's a bunch of MP3 files and an RSS feed. Um, yeah, maybe it's a, it's a little loud. I don't know. This is something I was working on um, elsewhere, and uh, maybe I'll talk about it for a sec. In pollen, normally there are not templates. There are not. There's not a lang for a template. Of course, in a racket project, the lang line determines everything in the file. It determines bindings that are brought in. It determines syntax that's available to you. Um, when you're in a pollen project and you're making a template, it's really. It doesn't have a language, it's just a snippet or a string, a file that happens to have some identifiers in it, and of course when you, so this is what a pollen template, if you're editing one, would look like, it's just just the text, there's no programming. There's snippets of code in there, but it's not, it's not, you're not in a programming environment when you're editing a template, so um, it's annoying because if you're using, you know, Emacs or, or Dr. Racket to do the editing, you know, you get errors, you can't really run it anyhow. So, I'm, I'm working on a, I, and this is just a proof of concept, I don't care if it keeps being called beeswax or if it becomes part of, you know, pollen eventually, if I can figure out how to, figure it out well enough to make a pull request to the official pollen project, but um, you, you run this Lang beeswax and what it does is it it exports a function called render. And I don't know if I can make this bigger a little bit for the screen. Um, and that render takes um, oh, it doesn't like that I changed the size now. It doesn't, uh, I think the function is procedure arity render tells you that it takes two arguments doc and metas. So the idea is that if I if I render, let's say I define D as, you know, 
kind of a pollen-like root expression. P. My document. Um, this is going to be interesting. Um, P my document. So that's D. And if I define M for metas as hash um, title foo. Um, okay. So if I now call render DM, um, it kind of renders the doc and the metas into wherever you've put them up here in the function definition area. I don't know if I have my presentify program up. Uh, let's see here. There we go. So here I put in a hash ref, and here I put in a doc, and you see down here, I'm getting the title inserted in there and kind of a string representation of the doc in here. So the idea is instead of, um, I, in fact, I did a, uh, a page for this, and I'll, I promise I'll get to the main event here soon. Let's do this, GitHub. The idea is that you could do Rayco beeswax render file.html, just like you do with pollen, except you know maybe it would be part of pollen, so you could do Rayco pollen render. And instead of it looking for a just a template, raw template file, it's going to look for a, a .rkt or a racket file and try and call its rent, it could be in any lang, it could be in lang beeswax or it couldn't be in any other language. Um, but uh, then it will call that render function and, and get out, you know, whatever you've put in there. So that's what that is. Um, and so it looks promising. I, I, you know, I'm learning a lot of syntaxy things, racket things in there. Um, okay. Okay, this is where we left it last week. Um, if I run this program, I will pause the music momentarily in case it's too loud. And I'm going to try and run this. See, I was messing around here. Okay. So let's. Uh... Don't say blast and wretch and fun. <laughs> well, there goes my my family friendliness. Um, if if I say, uh, actually, this other one was pretty good. Um, now this is kind of a long example, but I wanted to hear how good the WaveNet voice sounds um, sim synthesizing a longer uh, snippet of text. So here's what it sounds like. Pockets and possessions generally seem to me to have not only a more normal but a more dignified defense than the rather dirty individualism that talks about private enterprise. Sounds In pretty the good. Hope that it may possibly help others to understand it, I have decided to reproduce these studies as they stand, hasty and sometimes merely topical as they were. It is indeed very hard to reproduce them in this form, because they were editorial notes to a controversy largely conducted by others, but the general idea is at least present. In any case, private enterprise is no very noble way of stating the truth of one of the Ten Commandments. But there was at least a time when it was more or less true. The Manchester Radicals preached a rather crude and cruel sort of competition, but at least they practiced what they preached. Okay, so that was G.K. Chesterton being uh, kind of a long-winded ass. Um, but uh, uh, it, that sounds really good. It's The sentences flow, the, everything, it sounds like, uh, it doesn't sound like a bunch of syllables were stitched together, and that's what I like about the WaveNet 
kind of res AI driven result that we get. So this is possible now. So now we're going to start a new project um, and we're going to call it um, well first of all close this uh, I'm going to kill the rep bull I'm going to close the wavenet source and I want to start a new project. Um, code, let's call it Pollen Podcast. And then I want to call, I'm going to do pollen dot bracket. So, stepping back a bit. Let me bring in uh, bring in a terminal. CD pollen podcast. Oh, did I put it? Where did I put it? Where did I even put that fo that? Uh, Code Pollen Podcast. Oh, well, maybe I just need to save the file first. Yes, create the folder. Okay, so now I should be able to go there. What do we need for a pollen project? <clears throat> well, we need um, we need a pollen .racket file to process um, our our documents, and then we need a template. And we need uh, we need an RSS feed. Um, so let's see here. And the other thing is, we're going to want the uh, API documentation up because right now, now what we're getting into is this SSML. It's a special markup language that can kind of influence how the speech gets synthesized. Click the link, wait for it to show up. Um, and separately from that, I might just, you know, crib a bunch of stuff from another pollen project. Uh, Joel. Here's the pollen cookbook that we've worked on in the other, in the other, excuse me, in the other pollen time sessions we did on YouTube. I'm I'm cross posting these to YouTube, by the way, uh, or I, w I I will be. I did for the last one, and I'll cross post this one and future ones too if they're not terrible. The first two I'm not going to inflict on YouTube. I don't pretend that the first two are worth rewatching, but. Um, this is what we were working on in those sessions, and um, it kind of got a lot of linking back and forth between the, the book itself and the repo for the book. You can click on there and see the source for, for that page. Um, looking at the pollen.racket for that project, is there anything in there that I want to bring in? Um, I like having hard wrapped paragraphs. So I'm probably just going to I'm probably going to bring that in. I'm going to have to decide what to do. Okay, so this is SSML and SSML is kind of a you can think of it like a super lightweight um, HTML just for speech synthesis and there are sentence and paragraph elements within um, within this. Now, the, the snippet that you just heard me synthesize actually was synthesized as, as, as SSML. So, 
it seems like the case is that you don't actually need to be super rigorous about putting markup around everything in your in your text that you could conceivably mark up in order to get it to to sound correct. It'll actually the defaults actually sound pretty good. So when we think about how we're going to do our SSML markup, I think it's going to be um, driven by two considerations. One. Uh, is there markup in my normal workflow that's going to take extra work to take out that I might as well leave in? And two, is there, you know, is there are there some things we can do to to make it um, to make it sound better? So, for example, I, I kind of like to have the paragraph treatment in there. I think that would be good. I'm going to copy this function in here, and this this is one that I've kind of carried with me through a bunch of projects take that one with me and that all that does is it's a function you can use on your text to decode to to auto to automatically insert paragraph tags around paragraphs um, but without inserting line breaks everywhere where there's a line break because I like to hard wrap my documents these days at column 100 so there's that um, and I might just um, I might just copy this bit here, and I'll define root elements. Oops. Okay, and I forget. Um, you know what's cool? I don't know if, if this will show up. Um, you guys can't see it. I, I have an Alfred shortcut to give myself some uh, quick reference documents in the form of markdown files. And I have one for Emacs here because I'm still kind of a noob. Um, Re-index, control alt Q. Okay, that's right. You got to put it right on the. If I put the cursor right on a paragraph and hit control alt Q, well, it re-indents re the the S expression contained by that that parent print those parentheses. So, um, very nice. Okay. Another thing we need to do up top here, uh, this is typical on a Pollen project, provide all find out. Um, we've got to require some stuff here, require hmm, Pollen decode. have a doc here that isn't a real thing. Hexes, shadows, and earlier binding. Yeah, that's true. I can get rid of that. There. No, it doesn't shadow an earlier binding. And then a uh, doc here, what we're going to do is Oh yeah, there's a root element that I can use. Uh, let's see if I can go all the way to the top. Speak. I want everything to be enclosed in this speak tag. So that's what I'm going to do. Speak. Okay. Uh, 
Um, now we want, there's a couple more tag functions that we want. We want an emphasis tag that that can be used for emphasis and it can take a level attribute. So what we can do there, it's pretty simple. We can do on, we want um, call and tag define em add default tag function oh, I need to start that thing I think it's speak or no emphasis and the, this is kind of a convenience that automatically parses keyword elements for you so save it run it if I now do em high um, I get emphasis high if I do em level what does it say here moderate then it kind of an, it automatically puts that as an attribute of that. If I were to acquire pollen template, which gives me an HTML conversion function, I can show you what this will look like. And and that is your SSML. You can see the quotes are being escaped there because it's displaying it as a, as a string datum, but uh, obviously that won't be the case. So now I have an emphasis tag. Are there any others that I want to try here quick? What does say as do? Okay, say as a cardinal, an ordinal, characters, You know, I, I was thinking it might be cool to have an abbreviations tag that can optionally um, pronounce the thing that it's being abbreviated in parentheses. Um, what is P-A-R? Well, that's playing multiple parallel. It's playing multiple elements at once. Audio is for inserting other audio. I'm not going to get to that tonight. And break. Um, we have emphasis. What is mark? Uh, let's see here. Places a marker it can be used to reference a specific location. Probably not that interesting. Used to customize the pitch, speaking rate, and volume of text contained by the element. This is prosody. We could uh, we could have a. Uh, I mean, we could we could use these tags with just as is without even having to define them. That's what Pollen does for you. If uh, you use a tag function that doesn't. Um, doesn't have a function, then it just makes an X expression out of it. But prosody, you know, what what what's nice is with with it with by defining it I can make a short kind of shorthand for it. So EM instead of writing out emphasis every time. Um, um, prosody. Am I even saying that properly? Um, what, what, what would be a better name for that? I don't want to type that in my document. I could just say voice mod, something like that. Voice mod default tag function prosody. Okay. Um, so 
So now I have a pollen dot racket. Now we're going to need a new file. We're going to need our Let's just make a document. Chapter one dot mp3 dot pm. Lang pollen. Now I'm in kind of a pollen minor mode in my editor here. I can use type the at sign to get a lozenge. Um uh, what kind of uh, text are we going to use for this? Chapter one of what? Uh, what I did uh, last time I needed some text was uh, this was the let's see here the perfect edition project was something we worked on in these pollen time sessions which creates an EPUB file um, and I created a pollen for the text of this I used the the book The King in Yellow by Robert Chambers it's in the public domain and I knew I wasn't going to run into any problems there uh, hmm. preservation is the first law This is such a boring book. I, I wish there was a better option. I, and I, I should have gone spelunking in the Gutenberg project before this, but. Oh, you know what? Hmm. No, it's pretty dialogue heavy. I was thinking about that. What was the name of that web article where Tim Tebow goes for street? And I, I know that doesn't make any sense if you haven't heard about it before. Is it Tim Tebow? Or am I think I you know I'm not a football watcher, so I Yep, the CF okay, so this was a SB Nation published this online fiction piece called the Tim Tebow CFL Chronicles or the Canadian Football League. And uh, in the Canadian Football League, the fictional Canadian Football League, they have a rule. Oh no, Bound for Street. That's what it was. It's not Gone, gone for Street, it's Bound for Street. Um, so after all the setup here, what is Bound for Street? You gotta read this if you haven't read it. I'm kind of skimming for the, the punchline that I'm looking for here. It's only one match. I guess the uh, so I, I'll summarize it for you. When in this in this fictional football league, <laughs> when you go bound for street, that means you've gone through the end zone and you're actually taking the game out into the city, and uh, a kind of a new set of rules applies, and this can go on for a really long time. So. I could probably get some good uh, some good pros out of here. And you know there's some different kinds of things in here too. It's <clears throat> it's possible we might have a use for for changing the voice up a little bit with this dialogue. Um so we'll experiment with that. 
let's take this paragraph here, paste it into here, kind of wrap it. And this is uh, this is it now. Um, there's one thing I noticed after we finished broadcasting broadcasting the last time, which is that the API for CloudNet text to speech. Um, will accept a maximum of 5,000 characters per request. Um, I've got 14 lines of 100 characters, so I actually have four, five, six, seven, eight, eight lines. So I have uh, a maximum of an upper bound of probably 800 characters in this file so far. But I'm going to stop for now. And I want to see bracket mode. Uh, how do I run this? It's not in a. It's not in a racket mode. I guess I can do it on some racket. Okay, so can I just type racket mode? Now I'm in racket mode. This is an Emacs thing. So if I run this, um, I get the representation. It looks like it's wrapping the it's wrapping the paragraphs properly. Um, so that's good. Uh, is do I have the HTML? No, I don't. So let me just require that quick. And it's in, it's enclosing it in this speak format here. You know, I'm not going to even mess with this further. I'll just leave it the way it is. So there's uh, a sample chapter of our book. And now we need a template. But before we want before we have the template, I'm going to come on. Who do I want to update? Oh ZSH? Always. It's my favorite thing ever. It makes me feel like such a hacker. Not sure what happened there. What's going on? I got the I got the I got the rainbow beach ball. I could have just done could have just done this. I already have a terminal. What do I need that for? I'm gonna oh I'm gonna copy the test racket to here. I'm gonna call it um. Speech.racket. Oh, come on. Meanwhile, I have my other terminal back. Okay. Don't need it anymore. Okay, so this is the uh, sample that I had before. Um, I'm not sure I want to use the same voice. I kind of want to use a woman, female voice for this for this one. Um, and I can do that. the name of that file. Voices. I think it was Voices. 
melon. I need to redo this. Open input file. Oh, that's right, I need my API key. Let me grab my API key. Quick. Voice names, that's what I called it. So we want the ones, oh, and I can, that's right, I can prefix it. So we have EN GB. Those are the ones I can choose from, and the WaveNet ones are down here. These are the standard ones, they, they sound a little more like your classical stitching syllables together text-to-speech engine and this is more of your AI nice sounding one that we previewed earlier today so we have female male female male female you know I'm kind of curious about WaveNet F down here at the end of the list I, I you know I, I'm a contrarian what can I say so um, if we get Oh yeah, with, I think it was called get voice. No, it wasn't called that. Select. Select voice, that's what I called it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna do EN, you gotta get the exact string, G B. WaveNet F and I, I ought to make this function a little bit more forgiving but and that is the result there now these are the this is the the thing that you need to hand to my API interface um, I could I could kind of fetch it out using this function call right here every time the program runs but uh, it, it requires an API call. So the idea is if I just hard code it like this, I don't have to make a separate API call um, to get to get the list first. And it doesn't matter that much, but it, it, it's better not to be wasting bandwidth in the world, I, in, in my opinion. So we're going to do this. I'm just going to copy. This is a datum I can just use. Um, I'll have... Uh, British gal, I guess. I don't know. And um, I'm going to default to gal, although I'll be able to use either one. Yeah. Now, this is say... But I'm not going to necessarily need this function except for debugging purposes. Because what's going to happen is I'm going to, instead of saving the bytes and playing them right away, I'm actually just going to save them to a file. So let's do that. I'm going to provide from this module, provide. Save bytes. British dude. Um, British gal. Say. 
and everything. Whoa, what happened there? Come on. I can't remember if I screwed that up now. All from out wave net, just in case I need it. So this is this now this um, speech dot rkt is kind of a kind of a um, a support module for our template. what the problem is here. Okay, I think it's just complaining about the order of my requires again. Um, so much for that. Uh, our template. We need a template. We need a template dot mp3 dot p. And this file is going to be all racket code, so there's not going to be any string content to it. I'm going to escape into racket right away. I'm going to require speech racket. And I'm going to Well, I actually, I can just um, save bytes, synthesize, I have the bytes in the file name. big string of HTML, which actually it will be SSML, and then I'm going to, oh, did I, um, I'm not using the say function here, I'm using the synthesize from WaveNet. Let me just uh, quickly refer to that in the dumb way that I do by just going to my own repo on GitHub. Uh, WaveNet API. text and voice or name. So mp3 and then I will just spit out the bytes this is a technique that we use um, Basically, if you spit out raw bytes from the, uh, it, 
emit raw bytes from this template that you know it becomes a binary uh, result so and then pollen takes that binary result and puts it in whatever you are going to render so I just need to look at some docs here because of my I've been working with I was lucky today I didn't have to write any basic code I was writing PHP today so um, kind of forward into the 90s I guess early 2000s file bytes I need to make sure what I need that is from racket file I might also do is I want to delete the file, the temp file when I'm done with it. Well, I won't do that just yet because I might want it for debugging. I think it's that simple. So let's recap here. Here's our pollen file. I haven't done any markup on here, it's just text. So I'm not using any tag functions. So this essentially goes right to the root function in pollen.racket, which does a little work to wrap it the, with paragraph tags. And also the, wraps the whole document in this speak tag. That becomes the doc for that file. And then when I render it to MP3, it will look for the template file and find template.mp3. Uh, and kind of evaluate whatever's in there using the bindings for doc and metas, which I'm not, re I'm not really using the metas right now. Um, this is going to call that synthesize function to get the bytes and then save those bytes to an mp3 file and then spit that mp3 file out. So let's give it a go actually. Uh, Reiko pollen render chapter one dot mp3 it's gonna give it a go now I don't know if anyone's ever done this before this is the first time so are we gonna encounter bugs and pollen you know what, what's going to happen here so as expected we now have a temp.mp3 and a chapter 1.mp3 so what happened was it wrote you know up here it wrote these bytes to temp.mp3 and then we spit out those bytes and pollen used those bytes to create the thing we were rendering which was chapter 1.mp3 so, um, uh, how do I get to my I'm going to run the REPL here because then I can use my say function. Say no, I don't want to do that. I want to do play sound. Play sound chapter one dot mp3. Oh, it wants two. Oh yeah, that's right. I got to give it a, a true argument. What's going on here? 
Even in their grandest achievements, the Canadian people are humble. They built this enormous structure in downtown Toronto that stands 3,200 meters off the ground, that's about two miles, and they give it a name like, the CN Tower. The server sees me craning my neck to try to see the top of it through the window. Server, you know why they call it the CN Tower? Tebow, I guess because you can see a long way from the top of it. Server, nope, a lot of folks think that, but it's actually because when you get to the top of it, you can. Oh, yeah, I guess you, you knew already. Is this some problematic prose that I picked? I don't even know. Um, I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't fully expanding that <laughs> sentence when I picked it. Um, I don't know. I don't even know. Uh, in fact, I might, I might have already uh, lost my tab. Is it up here? There it is. Must have closed it by accident. So that that's pretty good, actually. So we got we got an MP3 file. Um, I'm gonna try. I want to try something else here. Uh, racket. You know, if I want to be nerdy about this, I noticed on RacketLang.org they said something about two new. Uh, racket books at the top there. And I'm going to go ahead and turn my music back on. Um, racket programming the fun way and don't teach per. Now these, these actually might. There's a bunch of racket books on here, which is kind of cool. Um, do I, do I want to use it? What, what's going to be good podcast material, I guess, is my question. Not the racket reference. You know, ftrain.com. You know, maybe Paul Ford deserves to have his um, poor, benighted, neglected, but beautiful ruin of a garden turned into a podcast. Turn that down a bit. That's... That's worth trying, I think. Of course, you gotta do it in his point. We could have it read by the, the British uh, WaveNet F here, I guess. But we can't use this piece. We gotta use. We gotta use something. Hopefully, this is still memory of the new economy. This is a great little piece. Let's see here. We're gonna we're gonna get a little fancier here. And we're gonna give it a title too. How are we gonna do? How you treat your titles is always. An interesting question. Do you do it in the metas? You know, I think I'm a fan of the underappreciated. Let's just do a title tag. And it's called Memory of the New Economy. Wow, I've got some some funky business here. Um could say 
author Paul Ford. Okay. Now, there's not a lot of emphasis or other things in this particular one. But I could I could do it anyway. Let's do um, okay. We've added an emphasis tag there. We could make this uh, a deeper voice because the we have the prosody tag here that we duplicated. We can say we can we can. Pitch. We want to pitch the voice down a little bit. Two semitones. That's a... What is that? A half tone? A tone? Oh, there's a W3 specification for this element. We can't... We can't. Okay, so pitch. We can do low. We'll try low. Voice mod. Uh, how many lines do I have here? 19. Nineteen times a hundred. Nineteen hundred characters. So we're well within the limit here. And we're gonna implement a we're gonna implement a a title tag, of course, because we've added that in. Define tag function. It can't be a default tag function because we're going to be a little more, a little more functiony, funky with it. Uh, how does that work? Attributes and elements. Okay, so we go title, attributes, elements. Um, we're going to define the author part. Um, if there was an, we want to make the author optional. I'm being a little extra here, but um, attribute reference. Ooh, this would actually be a good candidate for match. reference failure result um, I'll 
give it an F. Uh, that'll be the failure result. don't have the space in my brain to hold more than one language's library details at a time. Maybe not even one. <clears throat> I gotta look up match. So with match I can do string I gotta, now I gotta be thinking in my head, how is this person gonna say how you know <laughs> uh, say the title? So we're gonna format and now and I wanna insert a pause, a speech synthesis pause, a break. Strength equals weak. We'll do a strong break. So when I have my pollen tag, I'll just show you what I'm puzzling through in my head here. Um, it's this, here's what we got. Um, these, these, this is, whatever's in between these brackets will be in the elements. Now, the way this is written, there'll be a single string is what'll be in that elements list. Now, do I I could just leave them in there the way they are. Maybe I should do that. I shouldn't necessarily worry about, oh, is there more than one thing in there? Should I convert it to a string and then append all the strings into one string? Don't think I'll do that. I think what I'll do is, oops. Um, I'm just gonna leave the elements in there, which means I don't have to put this in there.
my uh, author part is going to be, if there's an author, it's going to say by Paula Ford. So we're going to do by format by A S. A little format string there. And then we'll put author part. There, there's our title string. Now, I don't have uh, txexpr, that's what gives me the attribute ref. And then I'm not sure, wait for the linter to catch up here to see what the squiggly line is about. Still doesn't like Okay, now, now, it, now it's fine. No, it still thinks that at, attribute ref is an unidentified... So we got to figure out, okay, did I, get, did I include the wrong package for that, or...? TXEXPR. I got it in there. I don't know what you're talking about. I should be able to run this. Yeah, I can without an error, so no problem. Um, okay, great. Now, if I run, There's a, I'm, I'm, this is my Emacs newbiness here. I'm not sure how to run it, but I think that should work. Oh, I just want to see what this will look like. Hang on a sec. Let's go to racket mode. Racket run and switch to REPL. See, that should be there. Is it because I don't have racket mode enabled right now? There it is. And now, so it's going to read the title, and now Memory of the New Economy Break by Paul Ford. I should add a period at the end there. And I have uh, some here. I have this prosody tag. Okay. Let's give that a let's give that a whirl. But first I'm going to add a period here. And let's go back. Render it. So this is the second time ever this has been done. Um, isn't this magical? It's a rendering. Again, this rendering times are a lot slower when I'm streaming. It's gonna be even faster when I get so I, I have some improvements in mind. Later this year I'm hoping to get a new laptop that will be newer than six years old. Will be zero years old. Um, I'm also hoping 
to prove if I continue to do these streaming sessions to um, move out of the furnace room and maybe into a different room. All, we don't have a huge house and a lot of our rooms are full, but uh, I gotta figure out how to string some Cat 5 or something over to a, one of the other rooms and uh, set up a better spot. Now I can go to, you know, just open a little Mac OS trick. I can just open this mp3 file in VLC <laughs> so, um, that's pretty cool. Let me just switch tracks there. Um, that sounds pretty good. We've got an MP3 file, so I'm going to. And I like when the during the uh, the quoted part here, pitching it didn't pitch it super low, but um, somewhat low. So that was kind of cool. So uh, we've got an MP3 file. Now we just need a, um, a, a an RSS feed. Uh, I have a pretty nice RSS feed generator that I've kind of developed over the years. Uh, RSS feed bracket. Um, I might just crib this whole thing out of here, and it's going to take a little bit of of adaptation because podcast RSS feeds are a little different than normal RSS feeds. But um, the gist of it is that you Where do you get the... Oh yeah, so this is going to fetch a bunch of stuff out of a SQLite cache, SQLite database, which I don't necessarily have. It's going to get a list in entities, cache con. listing RSS item so it converts a, a vector into an RSS item where oh yeah right here so listing RSS item fetch rows. So this is um, a good starting point and then of course I have, I'm going to probably make you guys promise not to, not to listen to it, but I had a, po a podcast once upon a time. Um, and I had a pretty nice handcrafted RSS feed, if I do say so myself. Um, it's 
not gonna seriously not gonna let me see it. Uh, I might just have to pull up Firefox. Oh, I suppose I could use that. This is not what I want. I'm gonna copy this link. And waiting for Firefox to start up for me. Firefox isn't so uh, picky about displaying XML documents. I don't think. There we go. What am I doing? Okay, I want to view page source because that's even a little, a little nicer, a little more raw. Oops. Scrolling in the wrong direction here. So there's a link, there's iTunes feed URL. We're going to have to supply a whole bunch of metadata about this silly, you know, RSS feeds. see here. Um, I'm, I could probably leave off a lot of the iTunes summary, you know, there's a title. This is an item. Oh, my computer is being slow all of a sudden. But by golly, I want to get this uh, RSS feed done. So for each item, we need a title, an author, a link. Do we need it? Do, is that required? It's been a while. This is what we have to end up with, though, in order to actually have a podcast that we can subscribe to. And once again, it's very XML-y. It's, it's an XML-y thing. There's keywords, owner. I could just hard code a lot of this stuff. So starting at the top, RSS, XML next week was Adam. That's kind of what I have going on here to feed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to start a new bracket thing. I'm going to call it RSS, we call it feed.racket, blank racket base, and I'm just going to fix it up to kind of match here. We've got XML NS Atom equals. So this is going to say RSS and this XML lang does not appear. XML NS atom equals atom.
I'm just going to copy the structure of this feed, version 2.0, version 2.0, okay. Then within that you have a channel and then an atom link. See, I don't have a website for this thing, so I'm a little bit stymied as to really whether I want to, you know, but uh, let's see here, we'll do this. Um, we'll just call this google.com right now. It's not going to be a real URL at this point. I need to enclose all of this in a channel. And then there's a link. A rel attribute. Um, a type attribute. get into title, which I already have here, and then a link, which is a URL, here's what I'm going to do, I'm going to do, to find these things up top here, podcast URL, HTTP, Uh, ftrain.com So you can see I'm kind of a s escaping out of the ex expression here to put in a put in that reference here and then I can also use it down here podcast URL ID there's an ID, is there an ID? There's not an ID in here, so that, that's kind of gone by the wayside. Title, feed title. I'll call it illegal F train. And link. need to change this up a little bit because there's not it's not an attribute it's the actual content of the tag I don't know if I can have a generator tag in this unfortunately so take that out there's not an ID Is there an updated tag? No, not really. I'm going to leave out the iTunes stuff for now. If I was submitting it to iTunes, I would care, but I think that might be it. It's not, this uh, format doesn't have a lot of room for author information. I could put in the iTunes owner name and email. 
iTunes owner. iTunes name. iTunes email. Fine. Feed author email. Joel at jduick.net. We'll want to make an image, categories, keywords. iTunes author. That's really Paul Ford at this point because he's the one with the words. Um, not really parameterizing at this point. My brain is winding down. I don't know how far I'm going to get here, folks. I'm not really using many functions. I'm using rack and match, I think. String append. I think after the iTunes email thing, map listing, I don't really have uh, it is title, author, link, subtitle, description, and enclosure. Wid is the same as the enclosure in a published name. Duration is a thing. So when we when we read our chapter files, we'll want a way to understand the duration. And I, when I was thinking about getting rid of that five thousand character limit, I think what I'm going to have to do eventually is break to allow unlimited length chapters, but my pollen dot rack will have to break them into chunks of 5,000, no more than 5,000 characters each. Which can be a little tricky, because you don't want to necessarily end it in the middle of a sentence. And then use FFmpeg to concatenate them together. I could probably also use this FFmpeg to get the duration in minutes and seconds out. <clears throat> Which would be good for the feed then. Well, I think we are going to leave it there for tonight. You can kind of see where I'm going with this. RSS feeds are a little wooly, but they're basically giant X expressions. There's some information that I'm going to want to be able to get out of my documents that I uh, hadn't considered before now. So we're getting there. Um, 
and when we're done it's going to be glorious. So I'm keeping my eye on the chat. There's nobody in the chat. Um, once again, probably any most of the people who watch this will be not will be seeing it later and not live. So whoever you are, uh, I salute you. And I am going to probably go uh, put my kids to bed. Thanks for being there. Thanks for watching. Any feedback, let me know on Twitter at Joel D. Um, including, uh, you know, audio quality or questions about what you've seen. And then finally, uh, once again, check out the uh, GitHub repo at other Joel slash WaveNet API. Um, and you can give it a try. Now you need to get an API key, but I've I've um, done the hard part for you, so to speak. So stay safe, be well, and uh, we'll see you soon.